Hello everyone, Stormrek here, or David. Today we're going to be reviewing XSplit and OBS, just kind of comparing the two, kind of just seeing how they match up to each other. Well, first of all, we're going to start off with uh, OBS. Let's look at the pros and cons of that. So as you can see, it starts off really quick compared to compared to XSplit. Um, it's pretty. It's it's harder to configure than XSplit because XSplit is just a it's a it's just a nicer program to work with. This one, say I click on a scene, then you have to click oh, preview, and then you click edit scene, and then you can move around all this stuff. And you can ac if you accidentally drag it off the screen, yeah, you can't get it back. You have to delete it and start over. So you just have to be a little bit more sure of it. But it opens faster. That's really nice. The preview, it'll show you exactly what everything looks like when you're going to be streaming. It gives you a little preview of what your streaming uh, rate is going to be at right in the bottom right corner. And then it'll be green if you're doing a good, if you're doing well on your stream. And it'll yellow, red. Yeah. Tells you your frame rate, your drop frames, and then how long you've been streaming for. Right now it says cannot find window because, well, obviously it's not open. So I'm going to stop preview. We're going to head into settings. Settings. Start off with general. It's just the language, and it's got a ton of languages. It's you just choose your language. Then the profile. Yep. There will be. It'll just say default or untitled, I think. And then you can you can choose yours if you want. Go to encoding. Uh, actually, you know what? Broadcast settings. Choose a uh, live stream, and then choose whatever. Uh, however you want to live stream. This one actually has YouTube built right into it, so it's much easier to stream to YouTube with OBS obviously. I'm on Twitch then you type in your stream key for Twitch well you just copy paste it always choose a server don't just leave it as uh, default I think it just goes to San Francisco on this one and uh, these are all default settings right here so then we head up to encoding er here how about this I'll just change this to like yeah okay 5000 yep uh, video let's go advance here we go set this back to zero like it's default now once you enter all your things in broadcast settings this will pop up and it'll tell you it is this is not optimized so it actually tells you the optimized settings for twitch in my case so it says encoding settings reduce your maximum bitrate to 3500 kilobits so you head down to encoding or change it to 3500 hit apply go back to broadcast settings hey look at that advanced settings Set keyframe interval two seconds. So I head that up to two seconds. Hit apply. Go to broadcast settings again, and it it is uh, optimized with Twitch at this point. Uh, this is just your base resolution, and then you can scale it down if you want to. Just choose your graphics card. Audio, you can pretty much leave audio alone unless you wanna. This is gonna be what. Uh, uh, this is gonna be desktop audio like anything playing in the background music or anything and then the mic would just be whatever like I'm talking through a mic right now so I would obviously choose well default because that's my default microphone if you want a microphone noise gate this is uh if the if your microphone has a uh, background noise like you can probably hear mine because it's not a very good microphone but it has background noise so obviously there's going to be some uh it'll be up here and you'll see the lines up here and it'll have like uh around 28 to 30 decibels or negative 28 to 30 decibels it'll be really quiet just a background noise if you have noise gate on it'll just if it's below 32 decibels negative 32 decibels it'll just turn off your mic and that's really nice for microphones like mine but if you have a really nice one then it's kind of irrelevant all right now that we're finished with OBS let's head over to XSplit all right it's finally open and as you can see, it's you can just drag things around. There's no dragging it off the screen. Just just on the just on principle, right here, it just looks so much nicer, so much easier to work with. The adding sources is really easy. Uh, it's really just kind of user friendly. You can switch scenes really easily too. Now let's head into settings. So there are two settings for this. One's for your actual live streaming, and one is just general settings. You go into general settings, it has your, you can go into profile, and that's just the, your XSplit profile. General, 
these are just kind of general settings your audio your where your recordings your local recordings are saved to channels it has all your channels in here resolutions and hotkeys so in channels is where you actually you would hit add and then you go twitch xsplit actually does not have youtube so you'd have to set that up your own way currently i'm running at 4100 kilobits which is actually not optimal so i'll turn that down uh... the audio encoding is just default in here everything is default actually i think i turned my cpu to super fast because i have extra internet and it'll let me run whatever game i play a little more smoothly if i go to super fast uh... you just would type in your username channel mine doesn't work so i just use my stream key uh, i hope you can't see all of it so you can't stream uh... always choose a location don't just use default because meh, default once that's all done you just hit ok apply ok broadcast and then you can start streaming when i stream with xsplit it takes up a little bit more cpu than i would than it would with obs so i actually go with obs because well i just think it's a better program overall i think that's about it for xsplit it's kind of being slow right now if you go to view you can see the resolution frame rate these are just like transitions from when you move from scene to scene uh, and then viewport is how big you want xsplit to look you can add your sources and everything and that's pretty much xsplit, XSplit in a nutshell alright now getting into the websites let's start with xsplit this is just under the buy xsplit from their homepage I just selected personal and for one month subscription to xsplit it costs forty dollars now i think that's just ridiculous for a streaming program i bought it once it's it's nice but i honestly think obs is just so much better this is their home website right here see right there home you just download just like that download and you can finish it downloads just like that it has six thirty two bit and sixty four bit super easy to get to from their home page if you go to help estimator you put in all your uh, system specs right here let's say okay well, I have about I have about 5,000 then you hit recommend settings it'll tell you what your recommended settings should be for streaming it says my max bitrate should be 3500 I, I am allowed to stream at 1080 I just go to 720 because I don't see that much of a quality difference and it allows me to play games at higher settings so the stream set, stream settings estimator is really nice there's a download button super easy to download and the home page is just really clean compared to xsplit where it's all cluttered up with registering there's no registering you just download obs just like that it's super easy and super reliable in conclusion i would definitely say obs beats out xsplit in almost every possible way the reason i said that obs was a little more difficult to move around and everything is because i started out with xsplit so i was just used to how xsplit works everything when i switched it to over to obs it took me ten minutes maybe to get everything down the in the settings menu the broadcasting settings all those uh... optimized settings helped so much got me through everything and now i can stream 720 easily 1080 if i want to and it, everything just sets up really nice it's super easy to control the plugins they are a little bit lacking but they definitely have what it takes to compete in the broadcasting market